saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, ye said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Hallelujah. Amen. This scripture is packed with a lot of things. As John the Revelator was receiving, he was asked to write, and anything that's supposed to be written was supposed to be passed on so that others can understand or know what it is. And he said that, blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord. He said, from henceforth, say the spirit of the Lord. He said that they may have rest from their labor. Every work that they have gone through, they've gone through, they should have rest. And their works will do what? Follow them. Hallelujah. Amen. We are alive. We are not dead anyway. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But one day we will be with the Lord. We are going to be where the Lord is. And there is something that is going to follow us to that place. And that is our works. Hallelujah. This is talking about believers. That time there were people who have already died. And John was made to understand that. Those people who had good works, their works followed them. For the past years, I remember when we were small, the gospel that was preached, we heard about righteousness, sanctification, holiness. So everybody's life was adjusted, always looking unto heaven. Because we were taught that there was a place that we were going, that heaven is our home. Because Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. So everybody worked very hard to be able to do what? Enter that place. Because the Bible says that they are in, there's a narrow way and there's a broad way. And in those times, many people chose the narrow way because we wanted to have a better future. But as time went on, we saw that the gospel, another gospel came. Everything is in the Bible. But when that gospel came, there was no more a balanced gospel. Do all those through the times, we were receiving some partial, I would say that some of the areas were partial because that time, prosperity was not preached, though it was in the Bible. We were only looking onto the area that we only go through suffering for Christ and then we go. That was how everything went. So a time came that there was some revelation and people began to dig into the word of God and began to understand that the word of God was supposed to be in a balanced place, in a balance um, as we receive it. But the thing got twisted and shifted from one balance to another balance. <laughs> so righteousness and the sanctification and other things was no more there. People began to say that, well, um, Abraham was blessed 
He was a righteous man. He was full of blessing. So everybody started chasing for prosperity, blessing. So when a message is being preached and you begin to preach righteousness and holiness, it doesn't attract people again. People want to hear prosperity. The word of God says that he wish above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou so what? Prosper. We know that prosperity is good. So from that time, people started chasing for wealth and other things, living the life of holiness aside. There was no balance. There was no balance. And even up to now, people are still um, rushing in or fighting in any way that they will prosper. It is not a bad thing to prosper. Hallelujah. It is biblical that it will be well with us. Because the God that we said was, is not a poor God. Hallelujah. He blesses us. But one of the things that we need to understand is that we have to preach a balanced uh, word of God. We have to eat balanced food so that we can live a balanced life. Hallelujah. Amen. But because of how the gospel came, many people don't think right now about heaven anymore. Because the false preachers are even saying that when you are enjoying life on earth, you are already in your heaven. When things are going bad, that is your hell. Then there's no any heaven or anywhere, hell anywhere. That's what some preachers are preaching. And it is all false preaching. Hallelujah. But this is the place that we see. Recently, I was listening, I was watching a clip on the, uh, what do you call it, the Facebook, and then um, they showed somebody, it was a pastor, very, very wealthy, rich. They, they showed pictures of his cars, his mansion, and everything that he had, and they showed the place that he was laid in state. And they wrote that this is a pastor who was uh, operating in the occult. So it was like, he was not a genuine pastor. And these uh, pastors who are false pastors have tried to uh, make the situation in such a way that other genuine pastors have also shifted to look for prosperity. And when people are preaching, they only preach, some of them preach only about their wealth. This is how many cars I have. Maybe I have seven cars, ten cars. I have my mansion and I have this. So when other pastors see that they become inferior because they don't have, somebody might not even have a bicycle, and he begins to feel inferior. And people begin to see in this time that when a pastor doesn't have a bicycle or a car, then he's not anointed. That is how people begin to view it. That people or anyone, a minister of God, who doesn't have a house, who doesn't have a car or something, it's not anointed because you are only anointed when you see the world and other things. And people even go they go as far to say that um, anointing without word is annoyance. <laughs> but when you closely look into the word of God, you will see that this man, as I, as I begin to look at him, all those things that he had and then he died, those things have been left behind. Hallelujah. All those things that he acquired through force. Some people might even acquire it through the genuine way. But all these things will still be left behind. You cannot carry these things to heaven. Job said that naked I came and naked will I go. One of the things that we have to be mindful is to look to the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to fret or covet for things that um, people are craving for. When you look at those who started the pillars of the gospel, those that the Lord used to establish or preach the gospel for us to receive, how many cars did they have? Or how many horses were they owing? Look at Paul. Paul said that I labored more than the rest of the apostles. Yet, we didn't hear that Paul was having mansions. We didn't hear that Paul was having maybe six cars or seven cars. When he's going to the market, he goes with the blue car. When he wants to go to prime meeting, he goes with the green car. When he wants to go to this, he... no, we didn't hear about that. Sometimes he said even in, he labored in a lot of areas, in Paris, in fastings, 
in hunger, mm -hmm. in persecution, in stripes. And he said that he was fighting the fight of faith. And one day he stood and said that, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. And there's a crown of life that is awaiting me. And also those that is also looking for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You see, when you look at the word, Paul, the works that he came to do, if Paul is going, his works will follow him. Yes. When Paul gets to heaven, his rewards, whatever he's going to have, is going to follow him. That's why Jesus said that we have to save in the bank of heaven. He said that place, no moth or water corrupt can corrupt anything over there. So when we learn to save in the heaven's bank, we will, we will have profit when we get there. But when we don't save and we begin to accumulate things on earth, we will regret it later. And I pray that that would not be our portion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When we read from Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 10, 8 to 10, it says, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. Amen. So a person does not get saved because of his works. No. We are saved by grace. But when you are saved and you come into the kingdom, you are expected to operate, to have some works done. He said that we have been formed, we have been created. We are God's workmanship. God intentionally wove us, make us to become people who will be people of good works. Hallelujah. That is how every believer has been created for. We've been created for good works. And when you look in the general, everybody was created to solve a problem on earth. You are a solution to something. Nobody was created to become a foolish being. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter your qualification. It doesn't matter your wealth. It doesn't matter the home that you come from. But in a, a particular set, uh, area, you are a solution to that. That is why we always need to discover where God has pleased us so that we will become fruitful. Somebody that you might think he's a useless person, you get it to a place and you see that the knowledge and other things that he has, he will be able to solve the solution, uh, uh, what do you call them? A problem in that very sector. Hallelujah. When Joseph was, um, what do you call it, was sold into Egypt and his time of promotion came, God used what he has placed in, in him to solve a problem. And that problem brought him that elevation. When the king looked around, and uh, what do you call it? Joseph gave the interpretation of the dream and said that somebody needs to be looked for who can handle this kind of management to make sure he do what? Um, put some grains that comes in abundance in some reserved area so that when there is famine, because some famine is going to come, so that he will be able to distribute so that the land will not perish. All the things that he was saying, the king said that we don't have anybody around who can handle the issue. As you are saying, you are the right man, so be in that office. He said that I am Pharaoh, and everybody will hear you. Besides, apart from me, everybody has to listen to you. I have given the order. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He was a solution to the problem that was ahead. Amen. Amen. Everybody is created to solve some particular problem. You are nobody is a useless being. People just say, "Oh, you are." When there's a problem, people begin to quarrel and say, "You are useless." No, nobody is a useless being. It doesn't matter how you look like. You might not be handsome. You are not be beautiful. But you, there's something inside you that some people need. Hallelujah. He said, "God has created us for uh, in, in His own workmanship." for good works. 
if we understand what we've been called for, we will not um, get derailed from where we've been called to do. Because those works that God is looking for, it is those works that will follow us. That works, whatever you have been called to do, it will follow you to heaven. Because in heaven, we have a lot of books that are there. That they are, the names of people and what they have done is written inside. So when people go and face, because we have the throne of judgment, we have the white throne, there are a lot of thrones that are in heaven. In the body of Christ, we have those of us who are saved. We are going to face the judgment seat of Christ. And that place is not a place that we're going to be condemned, but our works. That is where our works are going to speak. What followed you according to the book of Revelation? That is where we're going to see. Well, we have records of the book of works, the book of famous, and all those things we have it there. But the Bible says that if your name was not found, in the book of life, then there is a danger. So the first thing, make sure your name is written in the book of life. And then, those works come in, where you, what you have been called to do, you make sure you do it. People out of selfish activities in this world, now, in the moment that I'm speaking, people acquire a lot of wealth and other things, accumulate them, and refuse to help people who are in need. People can go to them, they are in the place to be able to help them, but they will not. People leave people in position in the nation because God knows that they are supposed to be there to meet some particular needs. Instead of meeting these needs, they carry the wealth of the nation outside the country somewhere and then they enjoy it whilst the nation will begin to go bankrupt, go and borrow, and people will be in need and a whole lot of things happening. That is selfishness. And Jesus Christ crucified selfishness on the cross. That's why he gave himself. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That will be able to operate in works. Amen. So we have to understand that we have been um, saved to work. Amen. Amen. But we don't work to get saved. But we are saved. And the moment you are saved, you come into a place that you have to come and work. That is what is there. You have to come and work. Because it is your works that is going to follow you. It is not a mansion or how many cars that you have that is going to speak for you in heaven. In heaven, all these things that people are craving for will not go anywhere. I thank God for other great men of God who understand all these things. When they start up, they even don't think about buying a, a house for their own. But all their attention is on the work of God. And God blesses them and even gives them more than that. That is what we need to have. Hallelujah. They, I understand it. So when we come to such position, we'll be able to do the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when we look into the scripture, we see that we are God's handiwork. And we have been created for good works. And it has been, it's been ordained from the beginning of the ages that that is how we're supposed to do God. That is how God has aligned with that. We are going to be people who will operate in this works. And he says that we have to do what? Work in them. Good works should be our what? Lifestyle. So whoever does not operate in good works is not doing the will of God. Amen. Amen. So John 6, 28 to 29, some people came and asked Jesus. He says that then they, they said, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God, that he believe on him, whom he has sent. Amen. Amen. That time, these people wanted to do the works of God. They came to him, and then they asked him, what can we do in order to do the works of God? The first thing he told them that, that the first works was to believe on him, whom God has sent. So our first work is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. When you believe in him, you have started the work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That is how it starts. 
when we begin to believe on him, that is our first works, and then other works follows. We know that when Jesus Christ came, that he went to be baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was arguing with him that, no, I cannot baptize you. I know who you are. You are supposed to baptize me. Jesus said that, that all righteousness might be fulfilled. So do it. And Jesus was baptized. He was God, yet he came on the man for him to baptize, to set an example. He said for all righteousness to be fulfilled. So he did it to fulfill all righteousness because it was part of it. That is why we need to be baptized as well. If Jesus got into baptism, we also need to be baptized. Hallelujah. By immersion. Because when you look at baptism by sprinkling, that is man-made. But God designed one who was supposed to be the one that you are deep in water. Because it has a symbol. It says that it is like dying, being buried, and then resurrecting. But when you are put in the water, the water covers you are dead. They lift you up. You rise with Christ. It's symbolic. But when something is sprinkled upon your face or your head, it's a different thing. You are still alive. You are not dead yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not dead yet. So we have to choose the right one. Because um, the man-made one is people who have um, designed it. But it's always good. You follow the pattern of the Almighty Father. Hallelujah. So we have a lot of work of righteousness that the Bible requires us to do. When you read Matthew chapter 6, it says that let your light so shine that people might see what? Your good works. So for, so for somebody's light to shine, it's a manifestation of his good works. Hallelujah. When you, it's from 15 there, 14, 15, 16 there. You see when you talk about we are the light of the world and so on and so forth. So the works of righteousness that we've been called to first is to believe we go into baptism, it is works. Giving our tithes and offering are all the works of righteousness. But one of the things I want us to understand is that the righteousness of Christ have been imputed on us. In it, in the moment that we are saved, we are saved Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. We are righteous before God. The meaning of it is it makes us understand that we have right standing with the Father. We've been brought back because we were separated because of sin. So we have right standing with the Father. So that is what it means. But there are some other works that we need to be fulfilled. We also need to fulfill some kind of righteousness. Imputed righteousness is there, and we have to also fulfill some kind of righteousness. That is why when we come to church, we give. And also, the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Coming to fellowship is also fulfilling righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. When we fast and pray, is fulfilling righteousness because Jesus said that when you fast, when you pray, it's part of the works. Of, as we study the word of God, it's all fulfilling righteousness. Because the Bible commands it. If you are partaking of the Holy Communion or the Last Supper, we are fulfilling what? Righteousness. If we begin to win souls, we are fulfilling righteousness. And that is the major area that we have to focus on. Because that was that is the the, the, what they call the, um, the core com of the mission that Jesus gave. The, the reason why he called the disciples or the apostles or he, he trained them was for this cause. Hallelujah. That was the great work that the apostle Paul came to fulfill. His own was purposely on the area of the Gentile world. That is why we are also hearing the gospel and ministering the gospel today because of those good works. So, some of the good works are the, these ones. So, winning souls is one of the major um, works that we've been called. Every child of God, whether you are evangelist, whether you are pastor, whoever you are, you've been called to win souls. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because our works will follow us when we go. It is not what you are going to acquire on earth. The Bible says that we should, what do you call it, uh, our riches and everything that we have, we have to put it in the bank of heaven. And how do we do it? As we give on earth. As we help the poor, the Bible says that when you help the poor, you lend to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is mindful of the poor. 
as we still support widows, they are all good works. All these things are works that we, the body of Christ, need to be doing. So when we look at the call, he called them to come and learn. From Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, let me just brush through quickly for time. It says that, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we see that they were called to come and learn. That is why Jesus brought them together, started teaching the disciples. He said that it is a kind of yoke. The Satan's yoke is so heavy that we need the anointing to break it. Hallelujah. But the yoke of Jesus Christ, he said, it is light. So when you look at Matthew 11, 28 to 30, we can see that he said that my yoke, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So when we come to the Lord, we come to learn. Amen. Amen. We don't come to dictate to him, tell him what to do, but we come and submit ourselves to him and then learn. Amen. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Also, there's a process that takes place when we are learning. The disciples went through a process of being refined and being trained. So when he called the disciples, the first thing that he told them when he saw Simon and the rest, he said, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So he made them from Matthew chapter 4, 19. He made them, hallelujah. He said, that come, he said, follow me. So he is a shepherd, we are the sheep. So we, we follow him as he leads. And then he said he will make us. Making is to bring something into uh, form or to process something. So he is the one who made them, taught them, and empowered them to, able to go. So we, say, we see that after he has, they have followed and he has made them, he commissioned them. So from Matthew 28, 18 to 20, that's where he says that all power is given unto me. Go and preach the gospel. He said, go forth. So, um, go ye therefore. That is what he said. Go ye therefore. That is what Jesus said. So they were commissioned to go and then preach to all nations. For all power has been given unto me. And the next thing was his empowerment. He empowered them from Acts 1, 8, that he said, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So they were also empowered to be able to do what? Go forth and minister, not only in Jerusalem, but in Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost part of the world. But when we look at when the church began in the book of Acts, the Lord had the mind of planting churches all over the world, making sure that there were churches in every place. But the disciples did not obey that way. They, had, they were making a mega church in one place. There were little problems over there, and when the Lord saw that there was a need, he permitted persecution. Persecution scattered them, and as they were running away for their lives, the Bible says that they never left the gospel, they were still preaching. So out of that, church started in different places. Antioch, a church started, Ephesus, all, a lot of places that we saw that church came up because of what persecution. But when we listen to the word of God, when God speaks to us, and then we take the word that he's saying and we do it. We will never go through some certain things that have to, um, what we go through. Sometimes God has to use pressure to push us to where he wants us to be. But when we understand him well, when he told Abraham to move and he moved, he didn't use pressure. But when he told the church to move, they were not moving. They were making a mega church, enjoying themselves in one place. Persecution came. When they saw that James had been killed, they were taking other people. They have to start running. <laughs> Hallelujah. God can protect them. Peter, when he was arrested, 
what happened? An angel came to take him where the prison gates were locked. The gates have to open by itself. But because they were not listening, that is why the persecution had to come. Somebody's life had to be a scapegoat for them to be able to move out. So people who don't obey the word of the Lord and enjoy maybe um, some kind of um, a mega church something, unless God says that make the church mega. But the mind of God is to make sure that churches are in every place, in every village, places that people will have access to serve and worship Him. Hallelujah. Amen. So when that thing doesn't happen, it brings persecution. Most of the time we see that persecution causes people to move. God will train people and move them through persecution and churches will start in various places. Sometimes some ministers of, uh, of the gospel do not understand, especially when the church is big, more congregation, God, more offering comes, more projects, more um, programs come on, they are able to do many, many things. But when people are leaving, uh, uh, the church is affected. So sometimes people can even pre preach and discourage their people not to move. Because they don't understand that the church is a moving church. Anytime that people don't move, God brings in some kind of persecution to make sure that he will bring his purposes to pass. So when we understand that the church is a moving church, what we will do is to train people and send them out. That is what the Antioch church was doing. You train them and then you send them. But the Jerusalem church will train the people and they were just still in the same place. You train people, you send them out. That is the mind of God. Hallelujah. Because it's part of the works. So that we will see the church expand in every place. Because many people are very happy when they stand in the pulpit and a large congregation is there. It is not bad. It's very nice. Yet, God has the mind of reaching some places. Unless maybe God hasn't called you in that area. But when you are called, you have to make sure that you send the people uh, um, to where they ought to be. You don't have to look at that maybe the offering will be cut small or whatever. Our part is to train and make sure people are used by the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So for our light to shine, the Bible also said that we should make our fruit to remain. From John 15, 16, it says that, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he might give it to you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. From John 15, 16. He chose us and said that we should go and bear fruit, bring forth fruit and let the fruit remain. God is expecting every person to be a soul winner. Bring forth fruit home. You have to be fruitful. From the beginning, God blessed Adam and said, be fruitful and multiply. That is the mind of God, fruitfulness, that we will be fruitful. He didn't make Adam a single man. He said that, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And when Jesus came, he set an example. We are the offspring of Jesus Christ. And we have to also expand. So that is the mind that we have to receive the word of God and also make sure we also bring in souls unto the Lord. Telling them about Jesus Christ, about the gospel, about the salvation that he has, about the good things that God has for us in future. That is what God has. When the disciples were asking the Lord, we have left father, our mother, our families and everything. What are we going to receive? Jesus said that even on earth, you will receive double fold. And the next to come with uh, what you call persecution. <laughs> Hallelujah. So per persecution was added to it. So when you are working for the Lord, you have to understand that challenges will come your way, but you don't have to be discouraged. Sometimes we don't tell people about the challenges that are in Christianity. We make Christianity like a cake um, being released from heaven. So when people are taught in that way, and then they don't understand and then they face a little challenge, they begin to murmur. But what kind of God are we serving? For the right message has not been given to them. We have to let them know that there are challenges in life. For Jesus said that those who hear his word and do them, they will be like that um, um, wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain came, 
the sun came and the wind came and blew them and the house stood still. He said the foolish man is the one who listens to the word and does not do it. And the same challenge is the rain, the sun, the wind, everything comes and the house will collapse. That means that whether you are righteous, whether you are wise, you will face challenges. But the difference is that because you are a doer of the word, when the challenge comes, you will not fall. You will still stand. Hallelujah. Because you have God on your side. But the one who doesn't do the work, when challenges come, complains here and there, and that person's life will collapse. So we have to be doers of the work. So let us remember, it is not bad to prosper, to have wealth. It's very good. It adds color to a lot of things in life. But let that be work mind deadness. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us be the people who will work everything that we accumulate. Let us use it to promote the kingdom. And as we do, we will have something that will speak for us one day. Yes. He said, those who die in the Lord, they will receive rest from their labor. What kind of labor? We have a lot of works to be done on earth. We worship the Lord. We do good things. We support the house of God. We support missions. A lot of things that we have to do. And in all these things, one day we we'll have rest. And what happens next? Our works follow us to heaven. So when you don't do any works and you want to become a boss on earth to enjoy life, when you get there, you will have nothing yeah. to show. No works. Because when they open the book of works, they will tell you, you were blessed with wealth. What did you use that money for? You were supposed to do that, you were supposed to do that, you did not do it. That is why we hear that those who use their wealth and other things to bless the uh, work of God, they have mansions and they have cities and other things. What they do is what um, the Lord uses to establish what they have in the other side of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have been... We are born again and we have been created for good works. So let us remember and then step into the act of works of God to do the work of God. Jesus said that while it is day, it has to work. So let us do the work of the Father while it is day. Time comes that you will not have that strength to do it. Now that you are young, Bible says that remember the, 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 your creator in the days of your youth. When the time comes that the thing that you are doing today, you might not be able to do at that time. So if you do it now, your works will follow you. And when you get there, you have so much. People who boast of wealth today, we will see if they will also boast when we get there. Many who are involved with their finances, with their strength and other things in the work of God now, they are the people who will be boasting one day because their works will follow them. People who get mansions and other things without doing what God says they should do. They leave them behind. You, they, that thing cannot follow you. Your car cannot follow you. Your mansion cannot follow you. But your good works will follow you. Yeah. The Bible says that let your light so shine that men might see your good works. Because they say when uh, 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 we are light of the world and every light is supposed to be on top so that all will see. It is not put under a bed. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be blessed. And I pray that we will step into the acts of God to be working for the Lord because that is what we've been created for. Good works. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially winning souls for the Lord. So in any manner, in any way, whether distributing tracts, whether speaking one-to-one, -one, inviting friends to church and all, they are all good works. And God looks at everything that we do. And they are recorded. And one day, you will receive your reward. Amen. Your works will follow you. Amen. And your works will speak for you one day. Your position, having a place, or being in charge of a city, a nation, whatever, it is your works that is going to do, uh, bring you to that level. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you and want to bless you for this morning for ministering to us concerning um, 
works because we have been created in your image, created for good works. Therefore, our prayer is that help us that every ability, every grace that you have endowed upon us, may we use it to work the good works that you have created us for. Put us in divine alignment wherever we have um, derailed. Bring us back and empower us to do what you have called us to do. That one day we will not regret, but you tell us well done as when we meet you. That our works will follow us. We bless you and we praise you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.